He's redeemed us. He's called us his own. Give yourselves in worship every single time. God is so, so good to us. And he welcomes us into his kingdom to be a part of his family. And that's worthy of praise. Amen? Amen. Today, we're going to talk about vision. Vision for New Life Fellowship. Like uh, Pise shared, we're going to talk a little bit today about vision. We're going to look back a little bit, but we're going to look forward into the future some too and see what God has planned for us for this next year, for the years to come. We see on there, Vision Sunday 2-2-2020. Two, two, That's the date today, February the 2nd, 2020. Before we get into a bunch of that, though, I, I want to tell you a little bit about New Life Fellowship. New Life Fellowship was started this year. It's going to be 26 years ago. 26 years ago. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. 26 years was started as just a small little group together who, uh, it was a group of university students meeting together. There was a missionary from the States who, who came and started it, and it was just a bunch of university students get together, study the Bible, and they got together on a regular basis, learned about God, gave their hearts to the Lord, Grow, 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 grow until, what do we see here today? Every, every weekend, two different campuses, over 1,800 people getting together through all our services, worshiping God, praising God. God has done a lot through one-on-one -on -one relationships, amen? It's not just try to gather a whole bunch of people, but it's one person reaching one person, Another person reaching one person. God wants to use you. God wants to use the individual to reach other individuals. That's how it grows. That's how the kingdom of God grows. It's not just, oh yeah, let's see how many people we can pack into a room. No, it's, it's one heart touching another heart. Another heart touching another heart. One heart touching another heart. And it's people like you who have touched other people. Maybe it's your family members. Maybe it's your coworkers. Maybe it's your friends. Maybe God has done something in you, and he wants you to let your light shine. And when a light shines, it brings a change in the darkness. Let's read a verse where this, uh, this idea comes from. Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 to 16. You are the light of the world. Everybody say that after me. You are the light of the world. All right, let's read it all read the whole thing all together. 1 2 3. You are the light of the world. A city situated on a hill cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket, but rather on a lampstand, and it gives light for all who are in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. I apologize for the typos. I typed that out real fast earlier and I made some mistakes in there. You are the light of the world. Everybody say that. You are the light of the world. All right, let's make it personal. Say, I am the light of the world. All right, tell your neighbor, I am the light of the world. But this light is not, it doesn't have its source in you. It's the Holy Spirit burning inside of you, letting the Holy Spirit bring change to you, make you more like him. And that's what shines in the darkness. That's what shines in the darkness. Let me read another verse from Proverbs 4. The path of the righteous is like the light of dawn, shining brighter and brighter until midday. That's what God wants to do through you. You are the light of the world. I am the light of the world. But God wants 
our light to shine brighter and brighter and brighter. Let me show you an example. Can I have, I haven't, didn't prepare this at all, but can I have all of the lights turned off? Can we do that? All the stage lights too? And even the LCD, can we turn the LCD off? Or just put it onto a black screen. We'll see, we'll see how dark we can get it in here. Can we do the uh, stage lights here too? Is that possible? And down, down, down they go. Oh, right, look at my, even my iPad's bright. Can we turn the LCD off? Just put it to a black screen. Is that possible? This is something I learned. Okay, all right, look at that. Oh, now we got the red drums. All right, I guess we can't do anything about that. All right, but I want to show you something here. So if you look around, okay, you can see who's playing on their phones right now, actually. You have the little <laughs> screens from their lights. Okay, yeah. All right, because you, you know why? Is because when everything is dark, all of the lights shine up. Maybe before, when all the lights were on, you didn't notice who was playing on their screen, but I can tell that Justice is on his phone right now, and he needs to put it away. All right, I can see him. But let me show you this, okay? So I'm going to make an impromptu little uh, lamp here. Have you ever seen this before? Watch this. Take, this is kind of the poor man's lamp. If you're out camping or the lights go off or something, look at that. Check that out. Yeah, just put your water bottle on there, and it's just kind of like a lamp there, huh? Isn't that pretty cool? So you turn your light on. Put your uh, little water bottle on there. Yeah, it's not, it's not that worthy of an applause. But, but think about this. Okay, let's pretend that this is our lamp, right? And we want it to bring light to a room. What would happen if we just kind of set it over here? Can you guys see it? Can you guys see it if it's there? Maybe a little bit, right? Okay. What's the best thing to do if we have a lamp? in a dark place is to lift it up and put it up as high as we can so its light can go as far as we can as as far as it can so we want to when when someone shines bright or when something shines bright in a dark place it gets lifted up and this is what god wants to do through us he wants to lift us up and to be a difference maker in the darkness. So all around is darkness. But right here, there's light. It's something different. It stands out. It's set apart. It's something different than everything that's around it. And just like with darkness and light, darkness cannot turn the light off. Do you ever hear somebody go into a room, the bright lights? Okay, can you turn the dark on, please? Did anybody ever say that? Can you turn the dark on? No, nobody says turn the dark on. You have to turn the lights off. Now, let's do a little experiment. I know everybody has phones out there, right? So, let your light shine. Everybody get your phone out. Turn your light on. I know that, I know that it's out there. All right, look at that. Oh, man, this looks awesome. Everybody put your, turn your lights on. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Look around, guys. Look at We're lighting up the whole room. That is amazing, huh? Look at that. Even You can see the light reflecting off the ceiling. We're all shining our lights. And that is what the kingdom of God is all about. Us shining our lights in the darkness, making a difference. One person can make a difference, but look what happens when we all lift our lights up and shine. Okay? You can turn your light on and put it in your pocket, but it doesn't make much of a difference. It's when you lift it up. And when we lift it up together, boy, oh boy, it makes a big difference, right? All right. Can we turn all the rest of the big lights on, please? All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys, for uh, humoring me when I threw all that. I appreciate that. But that's the truth about the light of God. One person can make a difference but look at what happens when we all let our light shines, our lights shine together. It makes a real big difference, and it can light up a much, much bigger place. You are called to be a light. You are called to be a light. New Life Fellowship is called to be a light. God did not create you just to fit in. God didn't create you to fit into this world. He didn't create you just to say, oh, yeah, just normal, normal. 
whatever, just like every other day, just like every other person. No, God put his spirit in you. God made you to stand out. Did you know, I think we've probably talked about this before in the last few weeks, but we are made in God's image. We are made in God's image. Meaning, the, 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 the image of God is in each one of us. The image of God himself. When you are creative, when you have an imagination, you have a creative thought, when you begin to design something or build something or draw something, you are using your creative ability that our creator gave to you. When you are using wisdom and making decisions, that's the image of God. God didn't create you just to stand out or just to be, just to fit in, just be a normal person. God created you with a light. He created you in his image and he wants to let, wants you to let your light shine. Listen to this quote by C.S. Lewis. He says, the more we let God take us over, the more truly ourselves we become. The more we let God take us over, the more truly ourselves we become. Because he made us. He in invented us. He invented all the different people that you and I intended to be. It is when I turn to Christ, when I give up myself to his personality that I first began to have a real personality of my own. God has something special for each one of us. God didn't create you to be like the person who is sitting beside you. God didn't create you to be, for you to be your teacher. God didn't create you to be like your mom and dad. Okay, you're going to have some characteristics of your mom and dad, but God made you special. God created you because he loves you and he has a specific purpose and a plan for your life. And it's when we surrender to God that we truly become the person that we were created to be. When we let him work through us, when we let him, the Holy Spirit, shine through us, that we are truly the person that God created us to be. God created us so that we would let our light shine. So that we would let our light shine and bring light to the darkness. Our church, New Life Fellowship, is made up of people. Okay, we're sure we have this nice building. We thank God for it. But the church is the people who are sitting here in the chairs. The church is the people who come and worship every Sunday at every service. The church is the people who go out and minister in the name of, in the name of Jesus and in the name of New Life Fellowship. That's the church. The church is not this nice place that we have, but the church is you. The church is individuals. The church is built one person at a time, and the church will continue to be built one person at a time. And the way that the way that the church has grown over the years is one person at a time, one person at a time, one person at a time. And we've seen that right from 26 years ago all the way until today. It wasn't like, okay, just one night, boom, okay, we have a whole bunch of people in this room. No, it's one person at a time, one person at a time, one person at a time, surrendering to the Lord, allowing him to live through them and seeing the kingdom of God continue to grow. God has called you to be a light. You are the light of the world. Another example that I've heard people say, and I really, really like this example. I heard a youth pastor say this a number of years ago, and I have to kind of put it in a Cambodian context, but God has called us not to be thermometers, but God has called us to be a thermostat or the remote control of your uh, air conditioner, right? A, thermo a thermometer, what does a thermometer do? 
It just tells us how hot or how cold something is. Okay? You can watch it go up. Oh, it's getting hot. It's getting hot. You watch it go down. Oh, it's getting cold. It's getting cold. Oh, it's getting hot. It's getting hot. Oh, it's getting cold. It has no power to change the atmosphere, right? It has no power to influence how hot or how cold. But once you get the thermometer for your, or not the thermometer, the, the uh, remote control for your air conditioner, you turn that thing on and it starts to blow cool air and the temperature starts to go down. It has power to influence. God didn't call us, that God didn't put us here in the earth just so that we could be a thermometer. Oh, things are going bad. Oh, things are going good. Things are going bad. Things. No, God didn't call us just to be thermometers. Okay? It's good that, you ha that we have discernment and we can see what's going on, but God called us to influence. God called us to bring change. God called us to have the power and the Holy Spirit that when we come into a situation, when we come into a, a specific problem or circumstance in our life, we have the power to influence through the Holy Spirit. Just like the lights have power to influence the darkness. We can light up and we can shine. We can, we're not just standing there saying, oh, yep, it's dark. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's really dark. Yeah, yeah, it's dark. No, we're going to turn the lights on and we're going to shine so that we can bring a change in the atmosphere. This is what God has called us to be. God has called us to influence. God has called us to change. God has called us to be people of change in our community. You know, I think about David in the Bible. And it says, one of, one, of the, one of the most impacting scriptures that it says about David, he fulfilled the call of God in his generation. Wow. He fulfilled the call of God in his generation. How amazing is that? That what he did, he had an influence in his generation. God put you here. I don't, we, we've all come from many different places all, from all around the world. We're all born in different days at different times. But this day, February the 2nd, 2020, we are sitting here today. And God has brought you here. And this is your time. And this is your generation. Let's be like David who fulfilled the calling of God in his generation. Shine your light. Be that influence. Be the person who brings change wherever you are. Because that's God's call for your life. You are someone who has the call of God on your life. And you're part of something big. You're part of something big. You're part of the, the kingdom of God. But you're also part of New Life Fellowship. This thing that's been going on for 26 years. Whether you started coming here 26 years ago or... 26 minutes ago, God has called you here, and you're here, and you're a part of something that's bigger than you. And it's great. It's awesome. It's wonderful to see what God is doing here. And I, I speak for all of the leaders here at New Life Fellowship when I say that it's a privilege for us just to be a part of what God's doing here in Cambodia. We don't take any credit for anything that happens or we don't oh it's because of this person or it's because of that person no god is moving sovereignly here god is moving in a in a mighty way and we're just happy to be along for the ride we do our parts we we're, we try to be faithful stewards like god has called us to be but god is doing something great here and it's an amazing amazing thing to be a part of and we want to thank you guys all for being here and being a part and serving and committing to New Life Fellowship because, because we couldn't do it without all of your help. <clears throat> Thank you for letting your light shine here in Cambodia. So let's get into some of our slides here. Let me turn the LCD on and get back to the slides. On Vision Sunday, today is Vision Sunday, I want to share with you the vision of New Life Fellowship. Maybe you've heard this before. Maybe this is the first time that you've heard it before. But it's three parts. The first part is to... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. That was the first part right there. Yeah, okay, there. 
Okay, to plant a large New Testament church in Phnom Penh, which will have a positive influence on every sector of Cambodian society. That's the vision of New Life Fellowship. We don't want to just have a church that meets together every Sunday, but doesn't have an influence outside. No, we want the people of New Life Fellowship to have an influence in this area, and in that area, and here, and there, to come in, gather together, get, get encouraged, get filled up, and then go out and have an influence on society. The, the sectors of society that we have, that we want to have an influence in, are... Next slide, please. I believe. There we go. Religion, education, politics, social relationships. Next one. Dun, dun, dun. Business, sports and entertainment, and communications. Over the years, we've seen many of our church members having influence in these different areas of society. And it's been great. We've seen influence. We've seen people go out and let their light shine in, in business, in, in education, in sports and entertainment, in communications. We have some people who are involved in radio stations and in TV programming, and, and they're members of our church, but it's seeing the light of Jesus influencing different areas of society. And this is what one of the um, goals, one of the visions of new life is to see. And we expect that in the years to come, we're going to see that increase. We're going to see that grow more and more. We need more people in every area of society. We need you to influence and to have, have a positive influence, to let your light shine in, in, in business and in politics and in, in, in religion and in, in sports and entertainment, all these other places. People need God. And it doesn't just happen here in church, and then we go out and live our lives normally. In the church, there's the light already. The light was meant to shine in the darkness. Take your light outside to the darkness and let it shine in the darkness. Those places where you think, oh, there's nobody who is going. Think about it. Sometimes we think, oh, it's too dark there. People won't receive. People won't listen to me when I talk about Jesus. You know what? Lights shine the brightest in the darkest of places. Lights shine the brightest in the darkest of places. And if you go to the dark places and let your light shine, people will be attracted to the light. Why? Because there's no other lights in that place. People will come to you and say, what's so different about you? What's the difference? What's this thing that I see? The joy, the peace, the happiness, the, the hope for the future. What is that? People are attracted to the light. People are attracted to the light. And so when we go and we shine in the darkness, expect that people are going to be attracted to it. So these are the areas that we want to see people have influence. All right, the next point of our vision We'll be a model and resource center for planting churches in every province of Cambodia with the same philosophy and foundation. You know, many years ago, I can't remember exactly if it's uh, 1999 or 2000, but that was when we had our first church plant many, many years ago. Uh, about 20 years ago is when we had our first church plant. The way that it happened is there was a ga young gal in our church, and she was single. She was from Kampung Tom. And I apologize if I get the story wrong, but I'm pretty sure that I got the details right. Because uh, I've heard this story several times. Um, so there was a young gal in our church, in our church here in Phnom Penh. And her parents were making her move back to Kampong Tom. So, so before she moved, she said to the church leader, she said, Hey, can you, can you start a church? Can you send somebody? I, I, I love this church. I love the presence of God. I love the worship. But now I'm going back to my hometown, my village, and there's nobody there. There's no other Christians there. And so she invited us to go up. And, uh, and so she went up, and nothing really happened at first. But then later on, she sent a letter back saying, please, I want to ask you again. Please come up. And so after that, we started to send a team up there to Kampong Tom. And uh, once a week, every Thursday, I believe it was, they went up every Thursday. I think Brother Morrow was part of the team that went up there. 
And he started evangelizing up there, started a Bible study up there, went to the, her village, met with her, met with her family, just walked around the village, got to know people, talked to people, invited them to study the Bible, and eventually started grow, gathering more and more people. And people started giving their lives to the Lord, one after another, one after another, one after another. Until finally, eventually, after uh, I'm not sure how many years, a couple of years probably, um, of, of doing that, we identified a pastor up there and planted our first church plant up in Kampong Tom. And so that was the very, very beginning of church planting from New Life Fellowship. It was all done through uh, word of mouth and invitation. Come do this. Come uh, evangelize. Come start a Bible study. And we're like, okay, yeah, let's do this. We'll follow, follow the invitation. Follow the Holy Spirit. Go and shine the light there and, and see what happens. And it started growing and growing and growing. And now this is part of our vision, to be a model, uh, to be a model church and also to be a resource center. We have many people, many uh, um, uh, wise, filled with the Holy Spirit people who, who've been writing curriculum, writing lessons, writing books, and on different subjects, and we're, we're giving those out to, to different churches, not just to New Life Fellowship churches, but to other churches. And we're a resource center. If you go up to our offices, we have... Uh, shelves and shelves and shelves of books that we've uh, written and that we use in all of our ministries and stuff. So we want to be a resource center. We want to see every church in Cambodia continue to grow. Uh, our worship CDs, we have uh, CDs, we have them on YouTube. We just make it free so that people can listen and be blessed by the presence of God. We want to be a blessing because God has blessed us with something here at our church. And we want to be a blessing to, to people all around. Um, yeah, we could, I could continue to go on more and more about that, but, but this is part of our vision. Uh, be a model and resource center for planting churches and planting churches in every province of Cambodia with the same philosophy and foundation. The next part of that vision, can we go to the next slide, please? To send Cambodians as missionaries to other countries. This is what our vision is. Amen? God has blessed our church through people coming from other countries, We've seen it grow, and we want to do the same thing to, to sow into other places where, where the kingdom of God needs to grow. God can use us. God will use us. God has a call on us to go and be a blessing. All right, so this, this is the vision of New Life Fellowship. All right, let's uh, continue on with the slides here. So, so this is a map of Cambodia here, and you can see where those little blue logos are. So those little blue logos represent one province where we have churches. And so 15 of the 27, 25, okay, yep, of the 25 provinces here in Cambodia, we have churches in 15 of these provinces. Can we give God a hand clap for that? Yeah. So there's 10 more that we don't have churches in, but uh, I believe we're working on those. We're going to con continue to see east to west, north to south, God uh, using us to plant churches uh, in all of Cambodia. All right, can we go to the next one? Next slide, please. We do church planting and pastor training. We've done church plants. We've um, uh, trained pastors and leaders from all parts of Cambodia. We've split Cambodia up into, six, into a few different regions, and we do training in each of those places, some in the north, some in the northwest, uh, some in the northeast, some in the south, so that pastors and leaders in those areas can, can meet together on a regular basis to receive ongoing teaching and training so that they can be equipped to go back out and they can continue to evangelize and see their church grow. We do everything from uh, theological type training to everything to finances and Christian uh, discipleship, how to grow as a leader, all of those sorts of things are part of our training courses that we have, not just for pastors, but also for youth workers and leaders and anybody else who wants to grow as a, uh, as a Christian leader. So we do those all over Cambodia. Uh, next slide, please. So we have 311 different locations. So just like that girl was part of starting that new church, 
We have 311 locations where we are actively uh, evangelizing and we are actively meeting together as, as some, some of them are just small house groups, uh, some of our, our house churches, some of them are uh, community centers that, we, that we've established in those villages. But there's 300 different, 311 different locations all around the country where we, um, where we have partnerships with pastors and leaders there. And we are involved in uh, teaching and training and planting churches in those areas. Amen? Isn't that awesome? We're going to thank God for that. Our goal is to continue to do this. And we want to see that number continue to grow and grow and grow more. All right. Let's continue on. Next slide. We also, here at our uh, Stum Che campus and also our other campus, our Tolson Kai campus, we have a skills training center where we do, where we teach English, we teach computer, we teach um, other life skills, and we, we teach, mostly it's, it's um, centered around office skills. And so we have free English classes where people in the community can come and study English. And then we also have things like typing, and we have things like uh, computer, and, and we do Microsoft Word. And so people can get training for free so that they can get better jobs. And we've seen lots of people graduate from our classes and go on to get better jobs that they wouldn't have a hope of getting later on. And so right now we have 1,900 students that are enrolled in all of our different classes. And they come all throughout the week, Monday through Saturday, and studying in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, in all of our different classes. Here, uh, all of these, all of our rooms that we have upstairs uh, that are children's classes on a Sunday, during the week they, uh, they're rearranged and we have put chairs in there and they become English classes. And so if you come here during a given, week, uh, a given day on the week, you'll see lots of students coming in and out. Uh, studying with us. So it's really neat uh, ministry to, to be a part of, but we have 1,900 students and that's going to continue to grow as well. Um, next slide, please. We also have, have, okay, so we also have what's called our patient care ministry. So over the years, we've found that there's been great needs in all of these places where we have been planting churches in the villages and that. And so we've arranged with different people over the years, different groups that have come through and different uh, groups of uh, nurses and doctors, and they would do checkups, and they would meet with people who have sicknesses or they need medical attention. And so over the years, we have met with 3,547 patients. Isn't that awesome? And so it's everything from, you know, <coughs> maybe they have, you know, they cut up their leg and they need some something to help it get cleaned up, or uh, we've helped people through... Uh, things like diabetes and different uh, uh, medical needs that people have. We also have our, uh, our healing home where we have people come in and get medical attention. But we also have a lot of, um, a lot of partnerships with other clinics and with other churches, or sorry, not churches, but um, hospitals, where we can help people get referrals to different doctors and to different... Uh, um, hospitals so that they can get medical treatment and we have a lot of good connections that we've developed over the years and so that's kind of a, a neat thing that we've seen with our patient care ministry we've dug wells help people to dig wells in different villages so that people in the village can come to the church and get fresh water we've done complimentary education you're going to have to follow through with me quick here guys go to the next slide yeah there we go wells yep next one got to fly through these keep going next one next slide please complimentary education so we do uh, 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 kids increased education in different uh, villages and different churches to help the kids continue to, to learn maybe they're not usually it's for kids who aren't uh, they don't have enough money to continue studying at night and so after school they come to our centers and they get uh, extra education next slide we have our children at risk sponsorship and that's for kids who maybe they've lost a mom or dad or their their family's poor we sponsor them to go through school we sponsor their family 
we supplement their rice a little bit every month uh, to, to bless them. We connect them with partners and sponsors from overseas. Also through New Life, we've done baptism. We've baptized over 627 members. I'm not sure when that was, uh, from when until when, but uh, we do regular baptisms and see people giving their lives to the Lord through our LG classes, learning more about God, getting baptized. Uh, the next slide, we also have New Life School. Um, and that's been a school. We have 283 students who are in New Life School right now. And a lot of those are actually some of our, our kids that they can't afford to, to go to a a, a, a school, so we sponsor them to go through New Life School. They study the government education, but in the in they also study English as well, and so they get more of a complete education, and so it's a real blessing for them. We have 283 students, and our building that we're renting right now is packed out. It's just packed out, and so we've just been trying to find as much room as we can in all of those buildings, and so what we're doing is we are currently in the process of building a new school. Amen? So this school, this, this location, is not too far from here. Let me get my bearings. I think it's just this direction. If you walk, it's about 10 minutes. We have a piece of land that we own, that we're building. And you can see in the bottom, bottom right there, right here, this is, I'm not sure how long ago this picture was taken, but this, these are the footings. This is the foundation for the school. And these are the artist renderings for our new school that we're building in there. It'll have capacity for 300 plus students in there, and it's gonna be a great blessing. Uh, we can bring all of our students there, and it's gonna, just gonna be amazing to have that all said and done. And if we go to the next slide, this is where we're at with New Life School. We're actually, we have two phases. Phase one is 62% funded. We have $225,000 that we still need for phase one. And we have donations coming in. If you guys want to partner with us uh, to help see that continue to grow and to reach more people, more kids. You know, we talked about, we talked about at the beginning, we talked about wanting to influence every area of society. Well, one of the ways that you do that is influence education. Get the kids from when they're young and continue to teach them all through. You know, in our, in our Christian school, we're teaching godly, godly principles and godly values. They're, in, they're involved in the church. And we're shaping a generation. We're shaping a generation through New Life School. And we don't know what these kids are going to do, but, you know, maybe they're the next, you know, minister of finance, or maybe they're the next minister of education, or maybe they're the next... Uh, you know, sports star or something like that. But they're going to have the foundation of godly principles in them and their light is going to be able to shine right from a young age in whatever area they go into. And so this is what we believe. And this is what we know and what we're going to see happen through New Life School. And so it's a great, great ministry to partner with and to be involved with. Our phase one, we need $225,000 more uh, to finish that. And once we do, we see that phase two is already fully funded at 165000 uh, We already have a donor who said, yep, I'm, I'm all in for phase two. Once you guys get phase one done, we're going to have that uh, completed, and then we'll go on to phase two. And so it's something to think about, pray about, ask, ask the Lord if he would want you to uh, partner together with this. But it's a great ministry to see seeds planted in these kids. And starting at a young age, letting their light shine and become a, a, a positive influence where they end up in life. Amen. If you want to, you want more information about this, we have a table out front in the lobby. You guys can, can get more information there. Find out what's going on. If you want to make a donation, there's more information about how to do that as well. Amen. So, God is good. All of these ministries that we talked about are continuing to grow. More churches are being planted. More souls are being saved. But we need you. We need you to be a part of it. Not, not just finances. Finances are good and everything, but what's more important is your heart. We need people 
who are part of this together with us. We're part of something big. We're, it's not just about one person, but we're a part of something that's larger than ourselves. It's part of the kingdom of God. And all of these ministries, as they continue to grow, maybe God has put it on your heart to go out and be a part of digging a well. Maybe God's telling you, yeah, I'd love to, I want you to go and dig a well. Maybe that's what God's put on your heart. We have a, we have a gentleman who comes over from Texas, and that's, all, that's basically all he does. He raises money. He says, I want to see people get clean water. And so he raises money every time. Every time he goes back to the States and he comes over maybe once every year and a half to two years and he goes out to all these places and digs wells. That's awesome. What a, what a great blessing that is for villages who don't have a well. You know, when, when things are all said and done, they have a pump and they have water and they have uh, clean drinking water. Maybe God's put it on your heart to be part of patient care ministry to help fund that or help to go out with other medical teams. Whatever it is, we need you. We need you to let your light shine. The kingdom of God needs you. Be a part of something great. Be a part of something that's bigger than yourself. And we'll see the kingdom of God continue to grow in 2020. Amen? You guys want to be a part of this vision? It's bigger than us, but it's part of God's vision for this country. Amen? Amen. Let's pray together. Hallelujah. Dear Heavenly Father, you are so good. God, we think back on our own personal lives about that one person who was influential in our lives, who shined their light, and they were faithful to shine their light, and that was something that was attractive to us. And we thought, what about this? Or maybe it was something that they said that pierced our heart by the power of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for sending that person into our lives. We thank you for the, the, the influence that you put within them, the, the, the light of God that you put within them that shined in us. And God, now we want to pass that on. We want to let our light shine more and more. So I pray, God, that you would speak to us. Speak to us, not just today, but every day. How we can let our light shine for you. Maybe we're in the darkness. Help us not to be ashamed. Help us not to be afraid. Help us not to be scared. But when the light shines, it pierces the darkness. Darkness has no influence over the light. But light has an influence over the darkness. So God, we give of ourselves to you today. We commit to let our light shine wherever we go, whatever situation we're in, because you have done great things in us and for us, and we want to see that continue to grow all around us. We thank you, God, for your blessings. We thank you for this day. God, I thank you for each person in this room right now. Lord, and I speak blessing over their lives. May they be more like you. May they hear your voice more clearly. May they see with the, with the eyes of God every situation that they're in and respond in faith because you are a great, great God. Thank you so much for your blessings and your goodness, God. We commit this day into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys all for coming this afternoon. Thank you for being a part of New Life Fellowship. If there's anybody at all, if you have any prayer requests, we invite you to come up to the front, meet with our leaders. We'll be waiting here at the front for the next few minutes. Come and join our hearts together in prayer. Join faith together because we want to see God move through you. Amen. If you don't have any prayer requests, God bless you guys.